In the beginning, there was a kingdom in space, a grand empire, kind of like the British Empire. And the people of this empire were mammals. They had big brains, they had money, education and technology. They had weaponry with which to conquer other races, and they had a patriarchal, class-based society. One of the mammals near the bottom of this hierarchy was a guy named Kraff. Now Kraff was blessed and cursed. He was sharper than your average man, even among a race of brainy types. But he was physically weak, unassertive and emotionally immature, probably due to poor parenting. Because of this, he didn't really do very well with women and tended to just be an embarrassment. He was what modern dating experts call an omega male. So he decided to reject the culture that rejected him and go his own way. He set sail from his home planet in a spaceship and went looking for a new world, kind of like America. A new world where Kraft could be the boss. Eventually, he found a suitable planet and landed his ship. This was Earth, and at the time of his arrival, the dominant life form was a body-oriented, red-skinned reptile species. One lizard in particular, an eye-catching female, aroused Kraft's interest immediately. They say opposites attract, and these two were like night and day. Zapho, as she was called, was a survival machine. Adaptable, ferocious, and sexy. Basically everything that he was not. He decided he had to conquer this land and have her for a mate. With the benefit of her instincts and strength, and his dexterity and intelligence, their children could be a master race. Who knows how he pulled it off? Perhaps he bribed the lizard people with trinkets from his advanced civilization. Maybe he used some of his superior technology to exterminate any opponents. In any case, Kraft was soon king of his new world. Zapho was pledged to him, and he set about securing his legacy. Now he took Zapho by force, cutting a gash into her abdomen and extracting her eggs directly. Then, with the benefit of some genetic tinkering and his chemically enhanced fertility, Kraft fertilised the eggs with his own semen and incubated the resulting zygotes artificially. Despite the rape, Zapho stayed by the side of her new husband. Perhaps this was because her race had learned to respect the Alpha as a matter of survival. Perhaps it was because he controlled all the resources, or maybe she knew he wouldn't let her see the children otherwise. Kraft had big plans for this newly combined reptile and mammal species, and he hashed out a system for their development and future. This was the beginning of his Epsilon program. When the first Epsilons were born, they looked far more like each other than either of their parents, but it was still possible to tell which genes were dominant in a given individual. Those taking after their lizard mother Zapho would have her red colouring, especially in the hair, while Kraft's lineage was expressed in the form of birthmarks, mirroring the prominent blue mark on his penis-shaped head. This first generation were taught language and social customs according to Kraft's will, and instructed to interbreed. Being one generation removed from lizards, incest was not uncomfortable for the Epsilons, and these first branches of the family tree bore much fruit. Kraft hid the purpose of sex from his children, denying that sperm existed or that there was any connection between sex and pregnancy in order that they not question and enjoy the act for its own sake. Indeed, males and females were mandated to pair off and shag a specific number of times a week to increase the diversity of genetic pairings and therefore mix and recombine the DNA in as many ways possible. After a couple of generations, diversity in the Epsilon population was sufficient that Kraft could introduce an incest taboo, thereafter forbidding sexual union between immediate relatives. On the other hand, one's brother-brother, sister-sister or brother-uncle, being a couple of generations removed, were all fair game at an Epsilon orgy. Things seemed to go well at first, and the children were mostly obedient of their father-father but he noticed a disturbing trend in those offspring that swung more to the red, lizard-like side of the gene pool. They were less interested in their obligations to the wider community and tended to be more independent and wild at heart. Kraft began to hand out harsher punishments for disobedient reds, condemning them to be raped or tortured for doubting his word. The especially obedient descendants, those who tended to be a purer blue genetically, Kraft would welcome to his inner circle, rewarding them for their loyalty to father-father. 
Kraff and Zaffo were both blessed with extraordinary longevity compared to the Epsilon population's average life expectancy. This seems likely an effect of his advanced technology in medicine, but they were practically immortal in the eyes of their offspring. Gifted with time, they grew to hate each other. Kraff was not the alpha he had first appeared, and turned out to be a drug-addled hedonistic loner who abused the plastic authority he had obtained in massacring her lizard people. Zaffo, stripped of her feminine worth as a mother, and being unwilling to suck his dick, no longer held any interest for him, and her unwillingness to listen to reason drove him to stop speaking to her entirely. Given that she was barren, while his artificially boosted masculinity left him with bags of fresh seed, even into old age, Kraft would inject fresh helpings of his DNA back into the population, taking his pick of the females and abusing his power as a self-mythologizing godhead. It's likely that he monitored pregnancies and terminated many viable fetuses he deemed as too red, too risky, and therefore unsavable. Like any father, in creating his rules and enforcing them ruthlessly, Kraft was making sure his offspring could survive without him. He hoped that by shaping a society with strongly ingrained customs and taboos, the Epsilon program would persist even without his direct intervention. Now, Zaffo must have noticed how Kraft was diluting her out of the gene pool systematically, and so she secretly ordered the reddest and most lizard-like of the Epsilons to interbreed exclusively in order that the reptile strands be preserved. These inbreeding lizards would become the Anunnaki, Zaffo's most trusted inner circle. With the Anunnaki as spies and saboteurs, she began to fight back against Kraft's dominance by diverting resources to her favourites and away from the kraft influence population. Tensions were high, and eventually there was a confrontation. Zaffo may have interrupted one of Kraft's orgies, perhaps a water party where he would drench his initiates in golden rain. Surprising him, she knelt before Kraft to drink of his life-giving fluids. In his hubris and relief at her submission, he was unprepared for the attack, as she snapped her jaws around his oral one, as he referred to his Johnson, biting it clean off. In his impotent rage, he wrapped his hands around her throat and held her under the surface of the fluids until she drowned. He too seems to have died of his injury, watching the two sides of their progeny begin a war that would destroy everything he had built. As their numbers grew and the population spread over the planet, much of their history was lost, and many people lived their whole lives only dimly aware of the reasons behind their uneasiness with other bloodlines. Nonetheless, signs of the underlying tension emerged into the culture from the collective unconscious. Both blue and red sides of the reptilian mammalian race we now call humans have grievances, and perhaps irreconcilable differences. Their struggle for dominance is played out in politics, but also on the streets as a racial conflict and turf war. Genocide and competitive breeding are the weapons of choice. As time has passed, as many as 1,000 years, Strands of mammalian and reptile DNA have crossed the planet many times and intermingled in far-off lands to produce new blends of humanity that combine red and blue traits into successful systems of elegant compromise. These newer groups have their own interests that compete with both the legacies of Kraft and Zaffo. There have also been attempts at cherry-picking certain genetic qualities from the branches of the human family tree, to engineer designer people for use as slaves or proxies for either side of the blue-red duality. And so, a ghetto culture of people with extraordinary natural talent has emerged, the greatest of them far surpassing the best mammal or lizard specimens. But at the same time, mixed heritage coupled with institutional interference leads to much infighting amongst the former slaves. Though their bodies are long dead, it's conceivable that both Zaffo and Kraft had immortal souls that transcended the reality they created for their children. It may be possible that they live on in spirit, watching over the population as sun and moon. Father still rises to the occasion on a daily basis, and mother's 28-day cycle is a constant reminder of fleeting feminine fertility. The Anunnaki are still around, directing red interests from their branches of government, notably the Republican Party and the IAA. Their aims are to secure land and resources for their kin, and they control the non-red population with drugs, mindless entertainment, and cuckoldry. Eventually an alpha male might rise from their numbers to defeat all challenges and sire a brood sizable enough to be decisive. The Epsilon program continues, the guiding principles of Kraft having been passed down the generations. 
The blue influences in government are the FIB and the Democratic Party. True blues will do anything for their father father, whether it is strict adherence to his sexual schedule or moving against his enemies on the red side. Though they are greater in number and largely control the media, their tolerance of differences may make them weak. The world Zappho and Kraft created for their children hangs in the balance. It's probably healthier for everyone if neither side is successful in moving against the other. Far better for them to remain in harmonious tension than for either of their extreme perspectives to become the norm. The die is already cast. The Epsilon program delivered its intended output recently. The physical form of Kraft reborn as a human being. He was an Omega male once who became an Alpha in a new world. Now his recombined DNA from generations of mixing has become truth formed into the man we know as Omega.